Hey guys, how's it going? So today I'm going to be doing a um, isometric voxel tutorial and we are going to be breaking this down into five stages. So it's going to be from the very start, so modeling and so on, to the very end in, um, in terms of rendering and color correction. So this piece is inspired by S Rank Designs. They're a um, artist on Instagram and they do some really cool isometric voxel designs and renders. And if you don't know what a voxel is, it's basically like pixel art, but in 3D. So it's just low poly essentially, but I really like the aesthetic and especially um, isometric. It's something about it pops really well. So yeah, let's get into it. This is the blender setup part of the tutorial. So we're gonna go through five different stages. It'll be the blender setup, then we'll model, then we'll work on the materials. We'll light the scene. Uh, we will then render. And actually there's a sixth part as well, which is post, which we'll be doing some color correction. So let's get going. Um, first is the blender setup. So as you can see, this is my scene here. It's a brand new scene, except for this section here, which I've just added a window. You can add windows by just clicking in the corner and dragging down. But I usually like to have this space allocated for the camera view so I can see what the camera is doing. And that is helpful just to see like what the final version will sort of look like. So that's why I do that. Um, let's first just make this square aspect ratio. So let's do that, make it 1080. And also I'm gonna turn off the these views so we can just see that and I'm also going to black this out so um, click on the camera and just go to viewport display and let's just turn this setting up to uh, one so now that we have that done let's also move the camera into place let's make the camera um, be centered to the scene so we're going to make it five minus five and then five again and then we are gonna do this rotation uh, on a 55 degree angle and the z rotation i should have said the x rotation on 55 and the z rotation on uh what is it 45 degrees we always want it 45 and now that's centered so we also want to make it isometric and this is the most important part and to do that you go from perspective in the type setting to orthographic. And you can see the camera just blew up a ton, but that doesn't really matter. We can turn the camera off because we don't need to see it at the moment. So now you can see in this window here that we've got a nice isometric box. That looks good to me. Uh, we also want to quickly change the render engine to cycles. Easy. And let's delete the default cube. It wouldn't be a blender tutorial unless we did that. Okay, let's get started. So this is the modeling section now. So let's hit shift A at a plane and this will be our lower level floor. So instead of modeling or adding geometry, more geometry to this using traditional um, like edit mode, we're just gonna do something really basic here and just go to the modifier and we are gonna add a solidify modifier. And you can see here that basically adds more geometry. So we're gonna solidify it. Let's make it about that big. So I'm just looking at my reference now. Uh, and if you want to hone in on the settings, hit shift and like move this with shift. Drag until you're happy, yep. And then let's duplicate this because we're going to make the floorboards. Hit G, Z, move it up. Let's go to front view. And I should note that I'm doing this all pretty quickly. Uh, I don't like lingering on things just cause if you linger on things too much, you don't make decisions and we want to make decisions. So I've just basically made that into a floorboard. There's one floorboard here and we're going to um, like duplicate it so it goes along the base floor. So that looks good enough to me right now. Let's add an array modifier and we're just gonna 
do as many as we need. Let's add a little bit of a gap and that's going to be on the X axis. Yeah, that's good. There's a nice gap in there. Yep. And as you can see, it's hanging over a little bit. So what we're going to do here is we're going to hit S and X, which means we're going to scale it in the X axis and we're just going to bring it to the corner there. We can be rough with this, um, mainly because, I mean, we're going to be seeing it from such a far view that you won't see all the tiny details. Um, so that's something to keep in mind if you start getting pedantic about it. Okay, so let's add a bevel modifier because we want to bevel the edges here so that we can uh, so that we can get kind of a, a, a chamfered effect on the edges at a reflect light and make it pop a little bit more. So bevel and let's make the amount lower while hitting shift. Yeah, that's good. And you'll notice I'm going to turn on uh, cavity and that should help you see everything a little bit better. So as you can see, it's really beveled in one direction and not beveled at all in another direction. To fix this, we simply click on it and hit uh, control A. That basically applies the transform. Um, and actually, do you know what? Undo that because we actually need to apply the array. Oh, sorry, we need to apply the solidify modifier first. So don't do that, ignore that. Let's apply it first. So then this is actual geometry that we can work with and Blend doesn't get confused. And then let's hit Control A again to apply the transform. And there you can see it's uniformly beveled rather than just going on one side because it can't calculate it correctly. Let's do it about there. We don't want it too extreme, but we don't want it not extreme enough that we can barely see it. That's good. I like that. One thing I'm noticing is this screen here is a little bit too far away. So let's, uh, where are we? Let's zoom in a little bit just so we can see it. Nice. Okay, so let's keep going. Let's add a fence. This is super easy. Let's just add a cube. Scale the cube down, go into front view. Let's just scale it up a heap, scale it down, scale it up. And just like start molding the scene without feeling uncomfortable about, um, you know, making decisions, just, just do. Um, I'm gonna just focus on this by hitting the full stop on the um, numpad and a little bit too high here, so I'm just gonna scale it down. That's good. That looks good to me. Does it? Maybe a little bit bigger, just in general. Yeah, it's good. Okay, now we're gonna do an array modifier again, and we're gonna just, um, you know, do one on this side along the x axis, and we're gonna do another array modifier along the y axis. This is really easy, so again, we just go to Ray modifier, and I think I did one, two, three, four. So four, and let's just pull it out to about there. Yep, that looks good to me. Let's duplicate, move this just anywhere for now, and then just delete the array modifier on this one. Put it around there. That's good. You can see that's. I just hit um, five, by the way, that brings you into isometric view. Sometimes that helps. Uh, okay, I need an array modifier again on this one. And we want five because we want it to go um, along this axis and we want it to line up here and then we'll make it four later. You'll see what I mean in a sec. So we're gonna go minus on the Y axis and let's just try and yeah, line it up with that one and then reduce it to four. So now everything is even. That is a perfectly even fence line. Okay, let's keep going. Uh, let's just do something really simple here. Let's just click on this one, duplicate it by Shift D and let's remove the array modifier, go into front view, rotate R90 and let's just bring it in the middle. 
and then we want to hit X and just scale it up, bring it up a bit. Oh, sorry, my mouse was out of screen for a second. Move it up. And then we want to hit, oh, let's get it in. The, let's get it centered correctly first. Uh, S, Y, it's good enough. Again, super rough. And let's hit S and then we want to hit Shift X so that it only, it, it avoids scaling in the X axis so it doesn't get longer, but it does get thinner. So it appears to look like a fence line. That looks good to me. Let's click it and go array modifier again. And we'll do three this time. And we will just pull it down a bit until it looks like a fence. That looks good. Let's click on it, go to top view. Let's shift D to duplicate. Let's move it over, R90. And then let's just move it into the center here. And as you can see, everything is dead on center as well. Cool, that worked out well. I'm just gonna move this over a little bit. Yep, nice. There we go, we've got a fence. Mad stuff. Okay, I'm gonna move, get rid of this again. If I am going too fast, let me know in the Discord. I will answer any questions that you have if you get stuck at any point. Um, that is the Bendy's Blender Club Discord that I have up at the moment. That there's a link to join in the description below. So just ask me any questions there and I'll be able to help you. I can even jump on voice chat or whatever and guide you through it if you like. Uh, okay, let's add another cube. This is going to be the lower floor, the first floor. And let's kind of just make it so that, I'm just gonna put wireframe on for a second. Let's make it so that it's kind of in the shape that we want it. Just, just mold it, hit G, Y, X, Z, scale it how you think it should look. It kind of needs to be a yeah, rectangle more. Yeah, that looks pretty good to me. Yeah, I like that. I like that. Maybe it's just a bit too tall. So let's go to solid view, hit tab, go into face select. Select the top face and just go down. I'm just eyeballing this really. There's no real, yeah, it looks good to me. Okay, and just with the sides here, let's click on this face. And a little trick is to turn on snap mode and then go down here and just do it to edge. And then if we hit G and then X, and just snap it to the edge and that'll slap, snap right to the edge. Let's do the same here. So G, Y, and then it snaps to the edge. Just remember to turn that off because it can muck about later on. Cool, so that looks about, about right to me. Let's go back into edit mode, select the top face here and we're gonna extrude upwards. This is gonna be a balcony area. It's good, now extrude. This out just a little bit, just whatever feels natural. Yeah, that looks good to me. Maybe it's a bit too far. Yeah, that's good. Okay, and now we're gonna select the two faces. We're gonna hit I and go in a bit just to create a little bit of an indent. And then we're going to go down with E to extrude downwards. Nice, so as you can see here, we're kind of adding a little bit of detail to the model. I'll actually also for this one, turn on cavity and outline just to help us out a bit. And I'm also gonna go back to the camera and just like continually line it up. Uh, let's go, so on the Z axis, I'm just gonna go up because we know that the building's gonna go up a bit higher, so that makes sense. Then I'm just gonna hide it again. Okay, so we have the base now. Now, what do we want to do? Okay, let's make the second floor. Just get that out of the way first. We're gonna add another cube and literally just like kind of eyeball it. And like really just be rough with it at first because honestly, if you spend too much time like finicking with stuff, you kind of don't make decisions after a while. And you just sit there like, stressed out so it's always good to make decisions 
Yep, I'm just, again, eyeballing it. Yeah, that looks good. Maybe just bring this one a bit further out. Nice, and the top can go down a bit too. Yet again, eyeballing, seeing what works, seeing if it looks good or not. Yeah, that's good. Okay, and then we're just quickly going to uh, select this front face here, and we're gonna hit I for inset, and inset a little bit, and this is just going to be the wall. So let's turn this on, X-ray mode, so we can see through it. Press E to extrude, and it's just gonna go to the back here on the Y axis. So we, yep, looks like a wall. And then also this is gonna get a bit confusing, but just follow along if you can. Let's turn um, X-ray off. We're gonna turn this back wall, we're gonna duplicate it and turn it into glass, but that'll come later. Um, we're just gonna make a mesh that will represent glass for now. So hit Shift D and we're gonna go along the Y axis, so hit Y. Nice, and now this is a separate plane. And then we're just gonna hit P and we're gonna separate that selection, what we've selected from the main mesh. So when I go out of it, you can see I can select this, the box, and I can select the glass as well, which is really helpful. Okay, so that represents the glass. That's pretty self-explanatory. Now we need to put a pool in here. I hope there's enough room for a pool, but you know what? We're gonna actually make it a little bit different than what I did in my preview render. And that's okay because every render is unique and you're welcome to make as many little changes as you want. It's literally your project to play around with. And again, I do apologize. I move pretty quickly with this kind of thing. Let's move it over. And I'm always referencing this. If it looks funny here, I kind of just, I actually just look at it from this view sometimes just to see um, like how the perspective works in isometric because isometric and perspective look so different sometimes. Um, Oh, one other thing as well. Let's grab the box, the box and the window, and let's just move it down so we don't have this lip here. So let's move it into itself. That's probably good enough. Have a little bit of a lip, but not much because we're gonna be putting these floorboards up here anyway. So I'm actually gonna make it go fully down. Nice. So that kind of disappears into the floor. That's good. Okay, we have the pool there. It looks, again, different from what, um, my original render was, but that's fine. Let's just have fun with it. Let's hit tab and go into edit mode and let's use the face selection tool and I to go in a bit and then extrude down. Cool, that's gonna be a pool. So we've got the pool there and let's keep going. Let's figure out this building now because we need to add windows and we also need to make sure the floor and walls have um, like geometry. It's not just an empty, empty uh, hull. A hull? I guess that's the right word. Um, let's hit forward slash on the keyboard and that basically just um, like gets rid of all other geometry and just solos this geometry, which is really helpful if you want to really focus on an individual piece of mesh. Uh, and that's really helpful. And you can just hit forward slash to get back to the scene. So we can do this two ways. We can use loop cuts hitting control R and we're going to make some loop cuts where the window sort of makes sense. Just gonna go into isometric view. So let's just make a few. Don't be too pedantic about it. Yep. One here. Because what I'm envisioning is there's a window here, there's a big window here, and then there's another window here. Oops. Just adding loop cuts and then we want to add a couple along this axis 
One there. And one about there. Cool. And then we, what we want to do is hit face select and then shift as we click. And they are our windows. So we're going to separate this from its geometry and then um, utilize them as um, windows. Instead of deleting them, we could delete them, but then we'd have to put them back in again as windows. So hit P and separate selection. And yep. And then we want to hit um, forward slash again to go back to our scene. And because that's kind of there at the moment and we can't see into it without removing it, uh, what we want to do is we want to just click on the uh, main mesh as well, uh, again, sorry, and hit forward slash, just to like solo this part so we can see within this mesh here, because that's important. Okay, so we want to hit control A and that is going to apply all transforms. And then when that happens, the origin gets moved to the 3D cursor. So we want to just go to origin to geometry again, just so it's centered again. It might not make sense now, but as you use that, you'll understand it more. And we want to add like walls in here instead of it just being a flat plane on each wall. So to do that, oh, let's get rid of the Boolean. I accidentally added that earlier. To do that, let's go to solidify. And as you can see, what that does is essentially it just adds geometry and we want to do even thickness as well. So that's all even. Now there are some issues in here. As you can see, there's something weird going on here. That's because we've extruded here. And so it kind of gets confused at a certain point, but as long as it looks okay from a distance, that's okay for this specific, um, tutorial, but sometimes it doesn't work and you have to go in and manually do it, but it's worked pretty well. And as you can see, if I, um, I do this, it starts going all wonky. That's kind of fun. But, um, yeah, for the moment, that's pretty cool. Yep. I like that a lot and hit forward slash again. And now that is fixed. If you can see there in X-ray mode, you've got your walls just like this has its walls as well. We need that for later on. That'll be important. Okay. So now what we want to do is we want to do the glass panels all around the um, top floor. So that's important just to add a little bit of, don't add a plane, add a cube. Let's go on a top view, Let's scale it down. Let's scale it in the Y axis as well. And then it's kind of hard to see like that. There we go. And we want to scale it in the Y, make just a yeah, nice plane there. It looks like a plane, but it's a 3D plane essentially. Bring it up, scale it on the Z axis. This is just rough for now. Move it over here and I'm not sure if that's intersecting or not. Yeah, cool. Yep. And then what we want to do is just line it up and keep looking in this view as well. Make sure it makes sense. Does it look too high? Is it too long? Blah, blah, blah. You get what I mean? Okay. So we're going to add an array to this as well. And we're going to make one, two, three, four, four. I had four in my original and we want to also just give it a little bit of a gap. That's good. Okay. So scale it in the X axis so that it just goes past here. There's a little bit of a gap, just like there's a little bit of a gap here. And does that look good in here? Yeah, I think it looks good. Let's also um, duplicate this around the other edges. So shift D. Y to move it along the Y axis and yeah, that looks good. I might turn on shadows quickly just to see. Yeah, that looks good. Cool. And now let's go to top view. I'm going to turn on X, um, sorry, Y frame just so I can see a little bit better. Um, I'm going to shift D, R, 90, enter, and then move it along this axis. Nice. As you can see, it goes a bit too far. So just go S 
Y to scale on the Y axis. Nice. And let's duplicate again, Shift D, move it along the X axis. And again, let's get it just to that point. I don't think it might be too far. Let's look okay, let's have a look. Ah, no. Let's move it back on the X axis. And because this is kind of like overlapping a bit and I don't like that, I'm just gonna select these both and just hit S, X and just move it a little bit, just so it's a bit more uniform. And I'm gonna also for these two, just scale it along the Y axis, axis, axis. Nice, just so it's a little bit more uniform and looks a bit more clean. And make sure you're saving as well, guys. If Blender crashes, you absolutely do not want to lose your progress. That happens all the time because Blender is unfortunately a 3D software and like any 3D software, glitches occur on the daily. <laughs> so that looks good to me. Let's add these to the top floor as well. And before we do that, let's go to the top floor, click on the main mesh, in um, face select, hit E for extrude. We just want to extrude that up a little bit. Yep. We want to go I, inset a little bit. And as you can see, it's not even, I don't like that. So what we're going to do is we're going to get out of tab view. We're going to go control A, apply our transforms. We're going to go set origin to geometry. We're gonna go back in, we're gonna hit I again. Look at that, much nicer. Cool, and let's E to extrude down. Probably there, that looks good to me. Yep. And now let's add our glass fence up there too. I don't know if it's called a glass fence actually. Maybe, maybe not. Uh, let's go into front view, shift D. Move it to the approximate location, make it three. Top view, move it in the Y direction. Nice, that fits almost perfectly. I'm not gonna lie, that did not happen last time. So that's kind of cool. Center it, Shift D, Y. Nice, and I reckon there'll be two panels for the next one. Shift D, R90. Move it over here. Yep. Two. And then scale it in the Y axis. Yeah, that's good. Damn, that worked out really well. It's rare. Okay. Um, move it forward a bit. And actually, do you know what? Kind of shot myself in the foot with that one. Let's move this over because it's not lining up really well. And because we moved it over, let's go S, X. Scale it a bit more. Yeah, nice. You can make as many of these choices as you want to. Yeah, that's good. Okay. Cool, that's looking good. The um, the top story is a bit taller than I first intended, but you know what? Architecture is unique and we shouldn't bag on stuff just because it's a little bit different. Okay, let's put these floorboards in the top area. Um, I think that would look nice. So let's do it the absolute hardest way because I'm joking, let's not do it the hardest way. Let's do it the easy way. Shift D. Let's move it up on the Z axis. And then in top view, go R90, enter. And now that is um, in the direction we want it to go. Let's turn off the array for now because it'll be difficult to understand um, how everything fits if the array is on. So let's just get it lined up um, inside this box here. Let's go tab. Let's go on to vertex select, 
Let's turn on X-ray. Let's just grab these vertices here, G, X, and let's move it within the wall here. Cool, we can do the same thing here, just move it over slightly. And I might even make it slightly smaller. Nice. Hit uh, tab again to get out of that view. Let's go to um, front view and let's just put it down a bit until it seems naturally in the floor. We can fix this up later. Cool, and let's turn on the array again and just turn it way down. Nice, that is almost perfect. Again, that rarely happens. So I'm just gonna uh, go S and then Y. Just move it slightly. Nice. That's looking really good, guys. Um, I'm really happy with that. So let's keep going. Remember to save everyone. Um, okay, next we'll do the, maybe we'll do the lawn chairs. I don't know what they call them around the world. I actually don't even know what we call them here. Relaxation chairs, but basically the, the chairs that go here. So let's add a cube. This is easy peasy. Add a cube and then let's go into forward slash so we can just focus on this. Let's make a shape that looks like what a bed would look like. Pretty about that. That looks good to me. And then let's duplicate this as well. And then pull it down on the Z axis, scale it along the Z axis. And this is gonna be the wood section. So this is gonna be the wood, um, how would you describe it? The wood, the bit of wood that kind of supports it. Sport, there you go. And the top is gonna be the cushion that you kind of lie on, it's all comfy. Okay, that's good. Let's make the legs first. So hit tab, let's hit control R. And then we're gonna make more of these loop cuts by um, scrolling our mouse wheel. So we're making two, double click, S, scale on the Y axis. So we have like a square shape here. We're gonna do the exact same here too. Make two, scale along the X axis, nice. And we're going to go into face select. I'm gonna grab these four and we're gonna extrude down. Nice, maybe a bit lower. Yeah, cool, that looks good. Let's get out of edit mode and add a bevel to that one. Yeah, it looks good. Remember, we're, we're seeing it from so far up as well, so it, it really doesn't matter if it looks a bit janky up close, no one's gonna see. Uh, okay, let's click on the, the, the cushion part and let's hit tab. Uh, control R and let's add a neck rest. So we click on the top here, face select, extrude outwards, rotate a bit and just push out. Yeah, that looks good. Let's add a bevel to that one and let's control A to apply the scale and also make sure you select the geometry, the the um, set origin to use geometry. So let's add the bevel, not much, but enough to look, I mean, it looks janky up, up this close, but it won't later on. Uh, let's make a cube again, scale it way down, move it way up, scale it down and let's turn this into a pillow. So just make a pillow shape. Something that looks kind of pillowy. Yeah, that's good. Let's rotate it. Let's kind of scale it. Yeah, that looks good. Again, from far, absolutely no issues there. Control A to apply a transform, set origin to geometry. Let's add a bevel and let's just, yeah, make it that. That looks good to me. Easy stuff, so forward slash again, and it has gone through the floor. Good stuff. Let's just go underneath and grab it. And let's move it up. And also let's scale it down so it makes sense. Does that look good in that far distance? I think it does, maybe a bit bigger. Yeah, that looks good to me. 
that makes sense. Let's make sure it's not going through the floor. So I'm just quickly gonna turn on random just to help understand when it starts going the floor. Yep, let's turn it back to um, just standard color, gray color. Yep, that looks good to me. Yep, cool, so let's just duplicate it. Select all three objects, go to top view, shift D and move it along the X axis and then do it again. And that's what it will look like in the final render. Cool. Uh, if we look at the scene as a whole, this is starting to come together really, really well. Um, I'm actually really happy with how this is looking. Let's do one last thing. Uh, let's make a cube. Let's bring it up and let's go forward slash again. Now this is gonna be a chair, really janky chair, but that's okay. Again, um, again, low poly and also just from a distance, you will not see this kind of stuff. So let's make a loop cut, two of them scale in the Y axis, one loop cut here. Actually, let's move it. Oops, sorry, on the X a bit more. Nice. Face select and let's select all of these top ones here extrude upwards and then select the back ones and extrude again. Wow, it's like a Minecraft chair. Uh, okay, I messed up again. I forgot to add the lower cube, but you can do that just as easily. Uh, let's move it up, scale it down. I'm just gonna go in front. Yep. We're literally just making the wood part again, like the lawn chairs. We're just making the under bit. Uh, probably a bit too much. Now I'm adding a little bit of a, like a gap between everything. This just helps with adding like shadow and kind of adding lines, natural lines. Uh, let's go into uh, edit mode, control R. Let's add two of these scale along the X axis. We're making the feet obviously. Scale along the Y axis, nice. Face select, extrude down, cool. And tap out of that. Now let's go to bevel and that looks good again to me. Let's just scale it up a bit. And yes, I know it looks a bit cringe, but again, no one's gonna notice. They're not gonna know. Uh, bevel, that one as well. Oh, let's hit uh, Control A again, apply our transforms and let's set origin to geometry. And then let's just like take this down way, 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 way. There you go. Cool, that is a chair. Wow, it looks really ugly, but once it's got um, materials on it and once it's from a distance, you won't even notice. So. Uh, hit forward slash again, let's scale it down. Let's put it in the correct location. About there. Yeah, that's good. Let's turn on random again, random color, just so we can see. G and Z. Yep, that's good. Let's turn that off. Let's go to top view and we shall duplicate it along the Y axis. So let's make three of them. All good things happen in three. Isn't that what they say? Or is it all bad things happen in three? Who knows? Okay. So I'm gonna move it back a little bit. Just, yeah, that's good. Sick. So we have our chairs, we have our lawn chairs, we have our pool, we have the glass, and oh, last thing, we need to add a pane of glass to here too. So let's do that. Let's add a cube. Let's go to the front. We want it to intersect here. Let's go to the side view. I want it to go around here. I'm just making like a window looking thing. Let's go it down a bit. Yeah, that looks good to me. And then we're going to click on the main room, I guess, add a modifier, Boolean, and then select the cube. Now what we're also gonna do is click on here, Shift D, 
click and then scale it in the X axis. And this is gonna be the window later once we turn this box off. So the window's there. Let's turn this box, where are we? The cube off and make sure you turn it off in the renderer as well. There we go. As you can see, there's a slot there for the window to go in and let's scale this along the uh, X axis. Yep. G and actually let's just get it to like a window looking. Yep. There we go. That's better. Cool. And now we have window. Sweet. Okay. That is, I would say done at the moment. I'm not going to bother adding the stairs that go up. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. Um, just quickly, if you want to know how to make stairs really, really quickly, you basically make a cube. Let me just solo this. You make a stair looking thing and then you add a modifier and array modifier. And then you essentially just go out and then go up and then you just keep going. That's stairs. So use the array modifier for stairs and then just literally um, the way I just cut out this window, just cut out a hole where the stairs come up. So pretty self-explanatory there, but I feel like I don't really need to add that into this one. I feel like you guys have that under control. Okay, now that that's done, we are going to head over to materials. So let's do that. So for the moment, we're going to just turn on the shading viewport and this is going to look really weird. Uh, we're going to do it on this one too. And it's going to look odd because there's no materials assigned to anything. So everything looks just really flat. I'm actually going to turn it off on here for now, but keep it on in the second window that I have just so I can see kind of the general um, color of everything. Now there's not going to be any lighting or anything like that just yet, but if we start with materials, we can add lighting later. Okay, so let's start. Let's just go from the bottom upwards, uh, from the ground up. So we want a wood color. Um, so what we're gonna do is go to the uh, shading or the materials tab here, and we're gonna click new, and we're gonna type in, we're just gonna call it wood, because that makes logical sense. So we're gonna make it a, um, like a wood color, I guess you'd call it. Now I have figured out the color beforehand, so I'm just gonna copy that over. Uh, yep, so the base color here, let's just make it a hex value and I'm just gonna paste in this hex value. Um, you can copy that value if you like. Um, let me just read it out, E79A72. That's the hex value for that one. And as you can see, it's actually updating already in the um, the second viewport display that I have just here. Cool. Um, awesome. Let's also add the um, same material to the um, wooden planks. And we're going to be doing this a lot throughout the, um, like adding materials to all of the different uh, components of the scene. We're going to be reusing materials over and over again. So let's add the wood. So if you didn't see what I just did then, you just click on what you want. You click on this little drop down here and just select the material because you can use the same material over and over and over again, which is really cool. And there you go, you can see it's applied there. Let's click on this second, um, uh, second story of wooden planks and let's click on it as well. And yeah, there we go. We have our first set of um, materials added to the, um, to the geometry. So let's also add that wood material to the underside of the chairs where we want the legs to be like this wooden color. As you can see, that's yeah exactly what we want. And we want to add it to these chairs up here too. So we just click on the lower half, add the wood. And we want to be as minimalistic as possible. Use as, as uh, 
as least amount of materials so that it kind of any any color change kind of pops and becomes more noticeable so remember to save let's do the glass next because that's actually going to be um, helpful for us to see in this um, shaded view so there's two separate glass shaders that I'm going to um, go through today the first one is going to be the windows so all of the windows are going to have one sh uh, shade set up or material set up rather and the fence is going to have a separate set up just because I want them to look a little bit different than the windows. I want to be able to see the black kind of lines you get when you add glass, whereas the windows, I don't want to see the black lines. You'll see what I mean in a second. So let's just start with the, um, sorry, I'm just getting something up. Let's start with the windows first. So to do this, we're going to add a new material. We're going to call it window or windows, which I've just made then. Uh, and let's pull up a new window here. <laughs> it's called window, opening a window, a bit confusing. Let's open the shade editor so that we can start mucking around with this. So we're going to delete this um, principled um, BSDF shader here, or node rather, and we're going to start from scratch. <clears throat> So let's go shift A and let's search and let's look for a mix shader. Let's add it and connect it to the surface. And then what we're going to do is um, we're basically going to uh, set this glass up um, as follows. So we're going to add another mix shader. Oops, wrong one, apologies. I have to use one hand for the keyboard because I can't actually um, reach the other hand over because the microphone's in the way. Something I'll fix later on. Uh, okay, so let's add a transparent node and we're going to plug that into the bottom. Yep. And let's also plug it into the lower half as well. Okay, let's add a glossy Plug that into the top shader for the mix, second mix shader and also a Frenzel. I don't know how to say that properly. Frenzel, 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 not sure. And let's make it 40. Okay, so now that that part is set up, we also need to um, control the factor. So that will be in, we need to add a math node, connect it to the factor, and we want to add another. So let's just duplicate this, put the value into the top value, and then we want to add a light path as well. Yep, and now we want to connect the is shadow ray, and we want to Connect that to the top value. We want diffuse to the lower, and we want the glossy to the lower value of this one. Cool. So if I look at everything, the roughness needs to be zero, and that should work just fine. Cool, let's add the window to everything else. Window, window, and you can see the preview here. It looks like um, glass, I guess, it's transparent. And this is the node setup that you want to use. Bit complicated, but um, it as you start using nodes more, you'll understand a bit more what everything means, essentially how everything like connects together but um, yeah that takes a while and that's totally fine um, cool let's go and do the glass for the um, the fence glass I guess you'd call it so we basically need to add a 
um, new material and let's again delete the principal shader and we're going to add a mix shader. I keep doing that, I'm so sorry. Yet again, doing this with one hand, it's a bit difficult. Okay, so yep, add a mix shader in and then we want to add a transparent to the bottom and then add a, a math node. And then we want to add a greater than and plug that into the factor. Duplicate this value into the top value there. And we want to add another light path like we did in the previous window. And we want to put is transmission ray into the bottom threshold. And we want to put is shadow ray to the top is diffuse ray into threshold. And then we want to do one more. We want to add glass shader. And we want to plug that into the shader that we want to make the roughness zero, which it is. And the IOR, we want to be 1.330. Cool, make sure you save. And that should look like that. Yeah, cool. It looks exactly how it's meant to. Awesome. So now what we want to do is apply that to the, oh, actually make this darker gray color. And you can see it here represented um, as like a preview version of the shader. So that's always helpful to look at as well. Cool. So that's would be it. I think this needs to be slightly darker just to let more light in. Cool. Looks good to me. Okay, let's collapse this, join the area, and let's just add that material. And sorry, I didn't name it either, did I? Let's just name this glass. So the glass is the fence glass and the windows are windows. Let's keep adding glass, 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 and glass. Nice. So I'm just quickly going to check to see what this looks like. Cool, that looks really good. Okay, let's continue. So let's see what it looks like so far. Cool. Let's focus on the pool next. So let's select the pool. And I'm just gonna zoom in here. So when we select the pool, what's gonna happen is we're going to add two materials to this. So one material is gonna represent the border and the other material is gonna represent the, um, I guess the, the pool water. So we're gonna add two here. We're gonna click on the first one. We're gonna hit tab to enter into edit mode. And the first one's selected, so let's just, uh, actually let's select everything and click assign for this first one. And then for the second one, we're just gonna click the pool water and make sure that second one is selected and hit assign. Cool, now let's get out of that. And the first one is gonna be the, I guess the, let's call it the walls because the walls are gonna be this dark color, so. Let's just stick with that for now. I think I actually have the exact wall color that I used. So let's do that instead, just to make things a little bit more consistent. So 373737 is the hex code for that one. And I also did the specular at uh, 0 0.3, 0 0.3, and the roughness at the highest point so that it's quite flat and doesn't look too Jarring. Okay, let's make the pool now. So pool, water. And for this, I just did the same thing. I made it a like a bluey color. Um, I'm actually gonna get the exact hex value now. Paste 
paste that in. The hex color is 3C5B86. And I also did the roughness at, I think, 0 0.01 probably, just so it's really reflective because that's how water is in real life. Let's quickly look in the rendered view. Yeah, nice. And now we're going to color the walls as well. So let's start with um, like this lower half of the building. So let's hit forward slash to just isolate again. And we'll be able to see it in here anyway. And let's use the wall color for everything for now. Um, but we also want the floor and the wall on the interior to be like a white color or like a brighter color so that it doesn't just look like a dark room in the, when the, um, when the light would put lights in here and we can see through the windows. So to do that, we're going to hit tab and go into edit mode. And we're also going to hit, um, we're actually going to, for a second, remove the solidifier so we can see the geometry on the inside. And so let's just click on the middle, hit control plus, and that's going to help us select a few more just to be quicker. Let's select the rest. And let's also get um, all of this geometry inside as well. And also let's do it on this side so that everything is selected. Let's go to uh, the material properties, hit the plus button. Then we're going to hit assign. So that's a, this um, material here is assigned to this wall on the inside. Let's just hit new and we can make a new material called, um, it's called that internal wall. And let's just make it, yeah, like a, yeah, that's good enough. And the roughness at one. So just a really light color there. And um, yeah, make sure you hit assign and let's just see if that worked really quickly. Head out, yep, nice. And let's not forget to turn back solidify on as well. Cool. So let's head for, hit four slash and let's do the same thing for this building. Though I think it kind of makes sense for the wall and the outside or the top. I want that to be dark as well. So let's just, go into the materials tab and hit wall. We select wall then as you can see here, the wall is now dark color as well, which is what we want. Cool. So another thing that I want to do is I want to have like an inset where it's like a lighter gray color, both here and on here. Um, the original artwork by um, S rank designs had like an inset that I really liked. So I'm going to, you know, follow his lead and do that as well. Uh, so let's do it on this, um, lower building first. So let's select it. Let's also hit forward slash just so we isolate it. Actually, no, let's not isolate it because we need to actually have context of whether this building is. So let's hit tab and let's grab these, these, uh, four lines and let's hit G and X and just butt it up against this wall. And then let's also go, um, control R at a split loop and just go along here as well. This is just to kind of make, um, some geometry that makes sense. And let's hit, um, click these two as well. Go G X, just butt it up against the pool. Now we're going to click all of these, select it using face select, press I, and we're gonna just inset it enough that it looks cool. Yep, that's good, that's even. And now we're going to add, while they're selected, add another material. We're going to also select walls, but we're gonna duplicate it. But before we do, let's hit assign, and then duplicate. I'm just gonna call it walls two. And then what we're going to do is just make a lighter color. And then as you can see there reflected, it's kind of a light outline and almost like tiling. We're going to do that on the top one as well. We're going to, so select the top face select, hit I going to go in a heap. I think that looks good. Let's go to the top, add another material, hit assign and then go to walls two. 
And as you can see up there, it adds another kind of rectangular looking. I'm just gonna make it a bit bigger. Nice. Okay, so that looks pretty good to me. Looks like almost everything is set. So now let's go on to, is everything done? Oh no, sorry. The, uh, let's get out of it. But the chairs need to be done and then we're done. So for the chairs, what I did was I had the middle one as the wall color, the main wall color. Yep. And also this one here, oops, this one here as the main wall color wall. I better save. And I'll just make a new material for the chair. Let's just make it kind of a gray color and make sure we put on roughness to 100%. So let's just select the chair material for these chair, 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 and chair. Nice, so that looks pretty good in my material view. Um, I think we're ready to set up the world lighting and also the internal lighting. So let's do that. So we want to first set up the scene material. So let's just turn, if you can do this, that's cool. If you can't do this because your computer can't handle it, just um, put the viewport uh, samples down to like 16 or something. And that might have a um, less intense effect on your computer if it's not capable. But if it is, hit this little um, viewport shading button. And now you can see it's actually rendered through cycles. So uh, what we wanna do is uh, just go render to region as well. So that just means it's not gonna render anything outside of the camera view, which is what we want. So firstly, let's delete this uh, random light and it's gonna absolutely kill the lights in the scene and we wanna add a world. So we've got background here, but we on the color, we wanna click this little button here and we wanna go sky texture. Now this is really good for adding a, like a sky into um, Blender and this is what it looks like. It's got a sun and it's all these settings that we can use to kind of hone in a sky looking effect. Um, before we do that though, let's just quickly add a plane into the scene and scale it up a ton and then just move it down a bit just temporarily so we can see what the um, floor looks like in relation to everything and see whether you know the sun is hitting and whatnot so let's just do that for now and let's just add a new material called floor and let's just make it like a pinky color that's cool and roughness we'll turn it up cool so now what we're going to do is we're going to go back to the world view and we're going to just going to change it a little bit to make it a little bit more dramatic and not so overly bright and blown out. So with the sky texture, we're going to um, make the sun softer. And by doing that, we just move this and it makes the shadow less full on. So I like to use 50. The sun intensity, let's turn that way down because it's a bit bright at the moment. So let's go to 0.5, half the sun. Uh, the sun elevation rotation, elevation just means how high it is in the sky and rotation is what direction it's pointing in. So the elevation, I think 35 degrees will work well. And then on the sun rotation, uh, minus a hundred. So now the sun is over here, shining its light and you can see there's a nice shadow here. Cool. So, uh, we have other settings as well. I want to change the air to 0.3. I want to change the dust to zero because it kind of creates a kind of a yellowy tint, which I don't like. Uh, let's change the ozone to uh, point. Uh, actually, no, let's keep it at one. Let's keep the, uh, the ozone to one. And let's just change the strength to 0.2 because it is a little bit over the top. Um, and we definitely want to fix that. 
Cool. So that's looking pretty good. I'm quite happy with that. Let's continue and I'm going to just check. Cool. Looks good. So the interior bedrooms or the, the rooms rather, not bedrooms, the rooms are quite dark. So let's add some lights into this scene. So let's hit uh, shift A and let's go down to light. Let's add an area of light. Now we can't see into it. So let's hit the X-ray and just go up on the Z axis. And we're just gonna add it into the lower floor. Right now it's just over the top, but we'll hone that in. Let's make it smaller as well. Cool. And we are going to change the lighting to a yellowy color or an orangey color. So I'll just get the hex number for you. Uh, it's FFD1BB. So that's the color we're gonna to use today. And I'm going to duplicate this light as well on the Z axis, move it up, make it smaller, go on the top. And let's just put it in the top room as well. Cool. And we're gonna make this one uh, much less intense. So we're gonna make it just three because there's a lot more light naturally coming into this room. Cool. So now that that is out of the way, we want to also be able to, yeah, so we want to be able to um, have some beams that kind of go down. I, I was originally going to do this in the, at the start, but I think now is a better time to do it just now that we can see the preview screen, which is more helpful. So to do this, I'm just going to do it really basic. I'm just going to take the part of this fence. I'm just going to duplicate it and move it along the Y axis a bit. And I'm just going to get rid of the array. And then we go in front view and literally just scale it up on the Z axis and then go into side view and just really scale it down on the Y axis. And these are just going to act as like beams that just intersect into the house just to create a natural window look. There's a lot of different ways you could do this, but this is just the way I've chosen today. Let's click it, see if it's in G Y. Nice. And we also want to make sure that, um, Oh, you know what? I forgot to do that. We need to make the, um, fence a different color as well. Uh, before we do that, let's just move it over and let's do it again, duplicate and just move it in the corner there. Nice. Cool. So they look like kind of natural windows and let's just duplicate it, move it along the Y axis. And just, you know, and just eyeball it really. Put it there, rotate along the Z axis 90 degrees. Yeah, nice. Okay, let's make one more up here. So let's duplicate along the Z axis. Let's make it smaller. Let's go to side view just so we can see it a bit better. Just eyeballing it. It really doesn't matter. Uh, move it on the X axis. Nice. Now we've got a natural line there too. Cool. Um, awesome. Now, one thing I did forget earlier is we haven't painted the fence. So I'm going to make it the wall color. Apologies. Let's grab all of them, change it to the wall color. Nice. That's looking a bit more complete now. It looked a bit funny before. Cool. I'm going to quickly do a test render, see what that looks like. And then I'll be back in a second. I was just about to do the test render and then I realized that I should probably, I mean, tell you all how to do the, um, the rendering setup before I bother. Um, we're not just there yet, but let's just do this anyway. So, um, we need to go open another window. Oops. Let's open a new window and let's go to the compositor and let's check use nodes. So, 
this is what we want and we want to go here into the layer properties and go down and check denoise data because we want to denoise this as well so in the um, compositor let's go search and look for denoise and let's connect the noisy image to image the denoise normal to the normal and the albedo to the albedo and the image let's just plug it back into there and let's just check what it's going to be using sorry and let's just check render as well and let's do optics cool and i'm going to be doing this test render at 512 just because i wanted a high quality but you can do it however you like um so i'll catch you in a sec when i finish this up okay so i've just rendered it out and i'm pretty happy with the results so far um, there's a lot that could be improved, but I think if you guys want to just, you know, go crazy and like start adding different objects inside the rooms, um, this, these windows are quite white and you can't really see anything through them at the moment, but that's because there's no objects in there. So it's just a white plain room. So if you add objects in there, you'll be able to render it out and kind of see through, which would be cool. And you can also add objects into this room. So you can do what I did and you know how you just render a low poly chair. You could render a low poly, t um, like a television or a table, um, anything that you want. And yeah, you'd be able to, um, fill the scene a bit more, but it is a minimalist look. So we don't want too much, but I'm really happy how the glass worked out. You can see that it's like got the outlines of the, the glass. And also the lighting looks pretty good to me. So I'm personally happy, but feel free to tinker as much as you want and do any kind of design. Um, but now let's do the final render. Um, if you are at that stage, if you're not pause and then come back to this moment, because we're going to do, um, something that requires us to basically delete the floor plane. And then we're going to uh, render it out as a PNG file. So the background is transparent. And we're going to bring it into Photoshop and do some cool stuff. So to do this, let's just get rid of this. To do this, let's um, turn render mode on so we can just see what's going on. Let's delete the um, floor plan because we don't need that anymore. And let's also go into render properties, film, transparent. Let's check, check that and then transparent glass. Let's also check that because we want to be able to see through the glass as well and not just be a black um, black box behind it. Cool. So now what we're gonna do is we are going to check that all the export settings are correct. So let's go to the export settings and we wanna make sure that it's on RGBA. That just basically means red, green, blue, and also alpha and alpha just means um, see through essentially a uh, transparent um, channel. I usually put my compression down to 0% and I do my color depth at 16. This just helps me um, hone in on the colors a little bit more and there's more color data. It is more expensive in terms of how much data it takes up, but it does allow you to tinker with the scene a little bit more later down the track if you say make an error or need to boost the lighting and whatnot. So let's save, that's all done. <clears throat> I'm gonna render it out at 1920 because I think that, oops, 1920 by 1920, just so it's a larger image. And then what I'm gonna do is turn the render off on that section and just render it out. Okay, so that's rendered out. I'm really happy with how that looks. Now I'm just gonna save it. Cool, so that's in Photoshop now. And as you can see by the checkers in the background, this is a PNG. So it has a transparent background, which is exactly what we want. Uh, that just allows us to play with the background a bit more. So let's make a new layer and bring it into the back. I just call it BG for background. And I already have a color pre-chosen out. So it's E7C9B1. That is the color I will be using in the background and paint on the background color. And as you can see, it looks pretty good. So what I also like to do is I like to just play with the values a bit 
just make it pop a bit more. So I'm going to just duplicate this by hitting control J and then with the top layer selected, I'm just going to go to filter and then camera raw filter. And that just allows us to play with some settings that um, helps us to pull out some, some detail and just like, yeah, change the colors a little bit. So I'm just going to go through and I just want to change the bright, the uh, tint and temperature, change the brightness a bit, maybe make it less contrasty. Just muck around with it until I kind of figure out what I like. I should really have the original image up so I can, or my original render. Um, yep, just play with it. Uh, texture, clarity, and dehaze, they're kind of important. They kind of help bring out some of the detail if there's not enough detail in there. So that's good. That was before and that's after. That's just tinkering around, basically just making it a bit brighter. So that's before, that's after. Yeah, I'm really happy with that. And last, um, I'll just like hide this original, but I just want to make it a bit smaller. So it's a bit, it's a bit more centered. Nice, and that is the final image. Uh, you can do as much as you want. You can like add a, a LUT over the top. So you could go color lookup and you could add like a two strip effect or whatever, three strip. That looks kind of cool. Um, there's a heap of stuff you can play with. Um, just have fun, really. I just encourage you all to have fun, try out new stuff and spend as much time on the scene as you like and add furniture to the interior and make different layouts and whatever else. But um, that's basically it. And I'd love to see what you guys create. Um, for sure, please share it on the Discord. That would be awesome. I'd love to give feedback and, and help if you have any questions as well. So join the Discord. That is in the link below in the video. And I hope this has been helpful. I'll be back shortly with another video on rigging. And until then, I will just be in the Discord chilling. Okay, I hope you have a great day and I hope this was helpful and I'll catch you guys next time. Okay, bye.